Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Brook City. Brook City is by Blacklist Games and it's for two to four players with a single player mode as well. In the game Brook City, you're going to be playing as an investigator or an LAP cop, or Brook City cop, I should say, and you're going to be trying to track down criminals. Now, unlike a lot of these vigilante style miniature games, which is what this kind of is, instead, you are not actually going to be taking down the criminal themselves. You're not going to go to their house and destroy them, but in fact, you're going to go throughout a chain of events that's going to be caused throughout the city as well as um, people doing investments or people doing some blackmailing and all this other kind of stuff and you need to go and figure out all the clues as to why this person is guilty of whatever crime it might be. Now they're going to be able to be, uh, you know, you can try and book them as well as arrest them and all that kind of stuff in the game, but that's not going to be the main goal because you're not going to be able to have anything stick on them unless you're going to be able to show the clues and show all the different uh, pieces of evidence that's going to suggest that this criminal actually did all the things that you're claiming that they did do. And you're going to be going around Brook City to do this. There's different things you're going to be taking, like there's going to be cars and boats and you're going to take bikes. To get around the city, you're going to interview different people as well as solve maybe murder cases or crime scene uh, evidence, all this kind of stuff that you need to go through and do in the game. And all at the same time, new things are popping out around the city. There's new crimes being had and new people doing malicious deeds and you need to try and work those out as well. If you can solve all the different clues, before the deck runs out or if you're able to uh, basically capture the guy with whatever specific intention that he has, whatever his motive is, then you're going to win the game. However, you have to do it pretty quickly because if he is able to gain a certain amount of influence before then, then you're going to lose the game. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you these full components of the game Brook City down below. So here we have Brook City by Blacklist Games and as you can see, it comes with quite a bit of things. Now first of all, you're going to notice is miniatures. Yes, each and every single cop is going to have their own unique miniature and because I just have a demo kit that's just going to be showing these two specific officers along with just the single uh, bad guy who is a Slade Harper. He's the guy they're trying to uh, figure out what he's done and how he's working with the syndicate in Brook City. We're also going to be getting these uh, different characters here and depending on how the campaign works you'll probably be getting different miniatures but I'm not exactly sure. But you'll be using these to mark down where all the different bad guys and crime scenes are taking place throughout the city. You're also going to get a board here and it's going to come with the alphabet and a numerical layer that will show where the different pieces are going to be like maybe P22 and you put your character there or the bad guy there. As well as you're going to be getting police cars. These are the ones you're going to start with in Brook City PD. However, you might have to go throughout the game and acquire new pieces or new 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 cars or new boats and all that kind of stuff. And you kind of like you're kind of gonna to have to acquiesce to certain certain vehicles throughout the game and you can do that by picking up new vehicles. Kind of like uh, Grand Theft Auto, right? You're also going to be getting your player cards here. Any leads that are going to be throughout the city, there's going to be bonuses that are going to help you. The case itself, which is going to be represented at the top of the board and what's going to happen every turn as well as the criminal deck and what's going to happen every turn with the criminal. The criminal is going to do different things and obviously there's going to be a different setup for each criminal. This will have a playing a player set up here. Uh, what is the operation and how, how the player, how the bad guy wins along with what the bad, who the bad guy is and what happens when you bust him as well as what happens uh, depending on what you're trying to do uh, regarding the character itself and then of course you've got all the different things that are going to take place whether they're events, crimes or uh, assets like in investors here. You're also going to get your own player deck. Each player is going to get their main character, which will be flipped over whenever it's not your turn, as well as a basic action, your, your basic stress level, and if you get too stressed, you're going to get fired, and that'll make you guys all lose the game. And then you're going to get a full player deck of cards that are going to have different things. Maybe you'll be able to intimidate, or you'll have a lot of determination. There'll be tactics you can play on yourself that'll last the entire game, or until they get, uh, get discarded, or you're going to be playing cards that are going to try and uh, arrest people. You're also going to get a set of unique uh, crested dice here that are going to have different actions on them whether and you're going to be normally using to try and bust certain things or to acquire certain evidence. Speaking of evidence, there's going to be different locations and these are the five little evidence chits here you'll be using as well as a lead token that changes throughout the game. These are going to be your hunches, you're going to have your bust tokens, and you're going to have influence and obviously the criminals are always trying to gain influence throughout the game. This is your stress level tokens and then these guys here are you're going to be your, the assets for the, the bad 
guys. Now obviously this is just a small portion of the game. I only have enough for two players and one single case file. And in fact there's going to be multitudes of cases. And then when you look throughout this rule book here, it'll tell you all the different cases and what, what extra stuff will be in the game, especially if you check the campaign itself. Here's just a couple of them. Mickey, Scott, and Gus are not actually in this, but you'll be able to get those in the campaign. Alright, so let's go ahead and go above and talk about a player turn and what you can do as long as as well as what the criminals are going to be doing throughout the game. Begin the game, we're going to do a little setup, right? Now, first of all, there's going to be the case deck, which is going to go on the bottom of the board, as well as the criminal deck, which is going to go on the top of the board. On your turn, there's going to be certain phases that are going to take place as well as what you're going to be able to do. But the first thing you need to do is actually get a police car as well as your character figure, your character card, your character deck, and to draw four cards from the top of that deck. From there, you're going to make sure everything is set up with the criminal deck as well as whatever each of the cases tell you to do or the criminals tell you to do. Like, for instance, Slade Harper here has a specific setup for himself, which I'll try and show you below. And then you're going to go throughout the turns. And as you go throughout the turns, you're going to have the criminal phase act after you. Your next player is going to go until all the players have acted. And then the case is going to uh, interact itself into the game. And then rinse and repeat. You'll be moving around the board and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and show you a setup of the game and a couple turns is how the game works. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and set up the game. Now, every single game is going to begin differently depending on the criminal deck and uh, the cases that you're going to be following. For instance, right now we are going to be doing Slade Harper, and it tells us here on the setup what we need to do. We need to place him in this location right here. Then we're going to go and get rid of this, as well as we're going to have this case deck here, which is normally going to be on the bottom here because the board is so big. I'm trying to condense it a little bit. But uh, in any case, you're going to be taking this. This is the slain diplomat, and remove all the clue cards from this deck here and put them over here, and then put each into play and shuffle the case deck and flip over this card, which means get rid of it. This simply states that during a, their turn, a, a cop near an inactive case can pick that thing up, as well as if a cop successfully encounters somebody, uh, they can place at least one of their tokens onto these cards here, and it's going to be their little hunch tokens, which are these. After that, you're not going to need this anymore. Now, uh, over here is actually going to be players uh, player area because, like I said, we're condensing it down. It's just a smaller little part of the board, which we're not currently using for this gameplay. But you're going to get four cards into your hand. You're going to also start with your main character, and you're going to start with the uh, BCPD Cruiser, which uh, you can go ahead and basically switch out with your character when you need to. You can actually do it um, between actions on your turn. But you're going to be doing a couple things, and it tells you on your cop's turn what you're going to be doing. The first thing it says is the dispatch phase, which is uh, refresh cards in your uh, cop play area and then draw and resolve a criminal card so basically anything that's turned flip 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 down which means you've already used your turn or whatever you're going to flip it back up and then you're going to take a card from the criminal deck and do what it says so it's a crime and it says takeover. So whenever you get a crime, you're gonna put it in your player area. And then it'll also tell you where the crime is being uh, committed. So K30, and you're gonna look on this thing, K, and then 30, and you're gonna put them down just like that. And then it's gonna say activate. So this is gonna be an activate, which is gonna happen at the end of your turn. And it's say place an influence on this card or discard a card that you control. Uh, then if there's three influence on this guy here, he actually will get one influence. If he gets five influence at any point in time, he is going to win. So you want to be very, very careful of that. And these guys are mainly going to be just used for crimes. After you've gone ahead and done that, then you're going to do your act phase, which you can perform these in any order that you'd like. And you could move, play a card, or play an action. So if you wanted to, your action is actually going to come on your guy here. Mine specifically is move up to two spaces and encounter um, for two dice. And you're going to use this gun to encounter. There's three different types of encounters. And as you can see over here, this will tell you that you've got the gun, you've got the hat, and then you've got the uh, walkie-talkie there. You can also use a card from your hand, and that will let you encounter. So specifically, this will let you encounter with a walkie-talkie. This will let you encounter with a gun. And you can also gain stress to progress missions. And the top of cards, it'll tell you uh, what you need in order to progress a specific mission. So for instance, if we look at this guy here, if we wanted to actually go deal with this guy who's over here, it's going to cost us three progress to deal with him. These are the resistance for each of the type of crimes. And then this is, of course, what happens and the location itself. So we know that if we want to get to this guy here, we have to have put three progress on him. So some of these cards will actually give us additional progress. And progress is basically these handcuffs, so that means we're going to be busting them. And we can bust everybody except for Mr. Harper here. He actually will not get busted. If he gets busted, he has a specific action that happens to him because our objective is to clear off all of these. So on our turn, like I said, we're going to be able to move and normally we're going to be able to move three spaces or three full areas if we're in our car. So if we're in our car, we get the three areas. 
So like that, one, two, three. Or if we're just by ourselves, we get one, two, three. Another thing we can do before we go ahead and move is we can play something, and sometimes we're going to get stuff. Instead of encounters, we're going to have tactics. This is one of them. Every time you do this gun encounter, you're going to gain an extra die. Sometimes it'll tell you you can actually, here's a physical training, plus one additional space whenever you move, and so on and so forth. You're going to put that in your play area. But you're going to have options to go deal with the lead over here, which is going to give us abilities or special, special things that are going to happen throughout the get time. We're going to be able to put our hunches onto these cards or try and deal with these cards, and they all have their own unique aspects of them and they're all located around the board it tells you on your case card as well as dealing with these guys here because after you leave them on the board after you've done all your actions you're going to do all the negative things that are going to affect this area the your, your area of the board which is all the crimes and whatnot and sometimes that means you're going to have to either put influence on these guys here or you're going to have to do something negative to yourself and in time you're going to get negative stuff up here and here and it's going to give this guy influence which means he's going to win while you're trying to deal with everything else then after that you've gone ahead and done this action you're gonna to get to draw a card from your deck and um, then after that you're going to turn your card over and let everybody else do the exact same actions and then there's going to be the criminal's turn and the criminal is going to get to do all of the actions up here and you're going to go in order and they're all going to be activate actions and mainly it's going to be you're going to be using um, different assets and whatnot because a lot of the crimes are going to be located on the board but for instance here we have jack ilmore here he gets to move all influence from each takeover card, which is on anybody's player board, and put them on himself, which makes it more difficult to get rid of the takeovers, uh, the takeover influence, and actually more likely for him to get it, right? But then after that, you're going to go into the case deck, and you simply draw one of these cards, read it, do what it says, put it on your player board, or give yourself some kind of negative effect, and then go ahead and discard it. And then once again, the round phase will take place, and you can choose whichever player you want to go first or second. And it's just going to be simply moving around the board. Now, when you get to a certain location, if you land on there, as long as you're right next to it, you can try and solve that or deal with it in whatever way. And then, of course, you can continue with each and every player. Now, a couple other things that are unique, too, is over here, these are different deeds and sometimes you're going to lose your police car like specifically this police car you can go ahead and discard it to teleport anywhere you want on the board but then it's gone however you're able to draw a new card sometimes you're going to get something like this ooh, which is really fast other times you can get something like this a dingle hopper which is really really slow and you'll be pulling them from the token pile over here and also these little guys here which are little dingle hoppers and every single deck is different, right? And let me go ahead and go over the dice really, really quick. So let's go ahead and say that this guy got over here, and I'm now next to this guy, so I'm going to go ahead and fight him. I'm going to use my basic ability, which is I get two of these guys here, and I get to move two spaces into them. So I've moved my two spaces into them, and I'm going to roll. This is resistance of one, so I roll here. That's a one, and then I have two of these hunches. If I had hunches already with my character, I could discard hunches to turn hunches into successes, so which I could discard these two to turn into three successes. Or if uh, I didn't have them, I would only get to, I would gain hunches, and that one success would go directly to him. But with his resistance of one, it will negate one success. So with three successes, I would get two uh, cuffs on him. With one success and two hunches, I would get no cuffs on him. Once I'm able to secure this by getting all three, he's going to be removed from the board, and whatever happens, happens. Sometimes it'll do different things depending on what it is. And whenever you deal with these guys here, they're going to get flipped over after you've successfully completed them. And if you can complete all five of these, you win the game. But that's the basic idea of how to play this specific one. But there's so many new, unique, different aspects throughout the game that you'll be doing, and different case files. But for this one specifically, you're going to be moving around the board, dealing with everything this guy has to throw at you and eventually you'll have to confront him in certain ways to try and get him to go to jail for all of the crimes he's committed. All right, let's go up and talk about it. So that's the basic idea of how to play the game Brook City. Now, as you know, this game actually has many different case files, uh, but I only have one of the variants and that is specifically the one, the Slade Diplomat with Slade. And uh, there's going to be different ones throughout the game. If you look at the campaign, it'll probably show you all the different ones that are going to be included. And that each and every game is going to function in a different way. For instance, this one is about more going around the city and collecting all the evidence and whatnot. And not so much dealing with the character himself. But you can, and it does help, as, long as, as well as dealing with these lead cards. And they do different things. So that's the basic idea of everything. Let me go ahead and tell you what I think about it. Okay. So my review for this game, let's go ahead and first talk about the product quality. This is a prototype, like I said before, and it has all these miniatures and it looks really, really good. Obviously the board is a little bigger than it's probably going to be in, in the actual game, which is nice because this is way too big for any table I have ever seen. So I tried to show you like a good 
80% of it. The dice are cool, they're nice, they're etched in. All the different miniatures look really nice. The cards are well done and the artwork is good too. I like all the artwork for all the different cards. Shows all different locations, it's beautiful, well, well done. And all of the characters have their own unique character art and you'll find that all the cards in the game that have to do with the character specifically are going to be associated with that character's deck. Such as, if I looked at Gabe's here, is the character I played, uh, he has got a ton of different cards and they are all with him doing different things and the cards function in the same way that they look. So for instance, this one over here is a tactic and during each of your uh, gun encounters, gain an extra die and it has that picture that goes along with it. They do feel very well uh, in balance and in relation to what the character is doing in the card and in the game. So that's really cool. Um, moving around the board was cool. I like the aspect of going around the board in certain areas and encountering different guys and there's a bunch of like things going on you can deal with. You want to deal with a lead, you want to deal with one of the cases, you want to deal with a suspect, you want to deal with a crime. You can do that, but it can be a little sluggish at times. And so I think to off balance that, you probably want to make sure that you're using your vehicles a lot, as well as if you ever have to, you can actually take these deeds, you can get rid of a cop car and actually fly across the board somewhere and pick up these guys here. And you're going to need to be nuking out of like getting out of vehicles and getting back into them and all that kind of stuff. There's some of the motorcycles and whatnot that you can use for a round and then after that it's going to go and you have to get a new motorcycle. So I would definitely do that, but it still can be a little sluggish in that area. However, the rest of the game is really, really fun. I like the aspect of rolling dice. I like the idea of using the die to come with the uh, little hunch symbols. And if you don't have hunches, you get them, or you can put them on other cards. Or if you do roll the hunch symbols and you already have hunches, you can choose to use those as more successes. That is a nice, interesting mechanic that I think works very well for this game. It has a developed storyline, and I do feel like I am encountering the character. I am dealing with Slade Harper and all of his crazy business uh, naughty villains that are like going around the city doing stuff for him. So like the criminal that pops up and every round I have to go, okay, just stop this one um, assistant and now she's back out of jail for some reason. Or here's an investor here and he's um, at the Liberty Bank and he's going through an active, it's an active move on influence from one takeover card to this card. So he's trying to take over the banks and whatnot and he's using this guy to do that. I have to go over to the bank and stop this guy from doing that which will then reduce the likelihood of him gaining influence in the city because you don't want the characters to get influence. It works really well. The story is good. The way it looks is good. Um, presentation and the mechanics are fun and the, the, the unique die rolling aspect is cool as well. It removes a lot of luck that would be associated to a game like this and um, it also gives that full flesh storyline. It reminds me kind of of the game The Others in terms of you can choose which characters you want to play and the boss and um, the different case files that are involved. And I really, really like that game. This one does a lot of that st similar stuff for me as well, but it gives it that like Vice City slash cop Grand Theft Auto feel. I'm really relating this game close to GTA. So if you like deep strate strategic miniature movement game with a little bit of tactics, a little bit of tableau management while you're going, drawing your cards and whatnot, you're definitely gonna like this game. I would definitely suggest you checking it out. For me personally, I really do enjoy this game. And if somebody asked me to play it, I would say, yep, not a problem because this game is pretty cool. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out Brook City, currently on Kickstarter in the description below. And if not, it will be soon. Definitely one of those games, if you like those kind of, it's dungeon crawler slash strategy games, it's right there for you. If it doesn't seem like it's free, it's probably not gonna be. But for the, there is definitely a niche for this specific game. And I did specifically enjoy it myself, along with the people who played with me. So we're looking forward to seeing all the extra stuff. Cause like I said, only, it's only was one of the different cases. All right, enough rambling. Oh, and check out my site, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, as well as checking out E Wins Gaming Chairs. You can actually pick up a gaming chair for yourself if you go into their website in the description below, and you get 10% off by using the code UNFILTERED for a gaming chair. They're excellent, and I do suggest them. All right, that's all I got for you, and as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.